Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my mini art talks. I'm very pleased that you joined me again today. Today I'm going to talk about a artist of the 19th century whose name is Gustave Courbet. And I'm going to talk about his painting, The Painter's Studio, which he did in 1855, the middle of the 19th century, and it's found today at the Musée d'Orsay. Now, Courbet was the principal proponent of his time of the art movement we call realism. And that was a movement whose um, uh, adherents believed that art should show the actualities of life, that there should be no idealization, there should be no prettification of what was going on in the world. And so the subjects of a lot of realist art were peasants and beggars and perhaps even prostitutes. These are all the people that bourgeois Parisians wanted to ignore or pretend that didn't exist. Uh, Courbet was uh, born in 1819. He came to Paris 20 years later in 1839. And uh, he painted the big subjects, life, death, nature, human existence. And he really challenged all of the practices of convention of the conventional art establishment of his time. And this painting here, the painter's studio, is really his, well, it's his masterpiece, even though it was painted when he was very young, but it's also a manifesto about what his beliefs were, what his opinions about the world were. So I'm going to, to try to break it down for you. Now the painting takes place in his studio. It's called the painter's studio. And he's got three groupings of, of people here. In the middle, of course, in the center of the whole picture is Courbet himself. He's the center. On the left side, um, you have here the, um, uh, I guess you would call them the exploited. All of the people that he feels in society are uh, exploited and have been uh, left out of uh, being able to prosper and better themselves. And he, show, he shows us um, not only the, these uh, people who've been left out, but also on this side of the painting, he shows us his enemies and the people who do not believe in what he believes. These are the people um, for whom death uh, stalks their lives, it stalks their life, either because they're victims or because they're perpetrators of this death. And then on the right side of the painting over here, you have what he called the shareholders. These are the, 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 his friends, the people that have um, uh, made his life better, uh, the people who, have, um, who agree with his opinions generally on art and on politics. And um, the reason why we know all of this and a lot of what I'm going to tell you is because he wrote about it when he was uh, painting this work. He wrote about his feelings in his journal. So we're very lucky to have that. Now, first of all, the painting is huge. It's at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris and it's absolutely huge. All of the figures you see in the painting are actually life size. So that gives you an idea of, of how big this is. So let's go to what's happening here on the left side first. So let's start right here. Uh, the first thing that's uh, interesting to see, I think, where is it here, is right here. You see a skull that is resting on a newspaper. And this is his way of saying death to the critics. These are the critics at that time, art critics at that time were very powerful and most of them supported academic art and they didn't have anything good to say about anybody who was doing anything new and different and that was Courbet. Uh, so he is saying death to the critics here. Um, now here in this part of the painting, he's showing us right here, this is a gathering of the exploited, he says. There's a Chinaman here, there's also a Jew, there's a veteran of the French Revolution, that may be this person here with the bandoliers. There's also supposedly an Irishman and a laborer and a poacher. Um, these are all people who, um, uh, people upon whom his enemies feed on whom his enemies exploit this uh, part of the, the painting here. It's a little bit ambiguous and mysterious as to who is who in here, but you get the idea. 
Now this becomes a very important figure here. This is Napoleon III. It's a likeness of him. So we know that that's Napoleon III. And Napoleon III was the dictator of the French Second Empire. He was a nephew of, of Napoleon. And he is disguising himself here as a huntsman, you see, with his hounds, right? Uh, because he doesn't want uh, people to know who he is because uh, according to Corbet, he is so hated. And he did um, run a very harsh, repressive, and corrupt regime, although he did do some good things as well, but he was mostly a very negative um, uh, influence as far as governance was concerned. And of course, we know that years after this painting was done, his regime ends in disaster of the Franco-Prussian War um, and uh, the popular workers uprising, the Paris Commune, which is, ends up as a very bloody and uh, horrible thing where between 20 and 40,000 Frenchmen are killed in the streets by French troops. Just a, a, a horrible, a horrible thing. Now also, um, Corbet shows us this on the floor. What do we have here? We have a floppy hat with a feather. We have a cloak and a dagger right here. And then we also have a guitar and they're on, on the floor. And this, this is all, these are all the accoutrements of the Romantics. Now Romanticism was the art movement that kind of preceded realism. And this was a world, the writers and the art artists of, of realism, of Romanticism gave us a world of dreams and emotions rather than the realism that Courbet was trying to portray. And he rejects that, Courbet rejects that, and that's why he shows this uh, uh, thrown on the floor here. Now I want to draw your attention to his uh, signature here. You see it's quite large because don't forget these are life size these figures so it's quite a large signature. He had a, quite an ego Corbet and he signed his paintings in huge letters and very often he also signed them in red, uh, the color of blood, the color of revolution. So that was that was definitely Corbet. Now let me just now talk about this crucified figure here, kind of a little bit in, in, in the shadows here. Now this symbolizes academic art. Academic art at this time um, was, um, academic uh, art was supposed to paint things that ennobled people, that taught a moral lesson, that made people uh, into to, uh, better people in a, a very conventional way. So these artists painted religious figures, they painted scenes from mythology, they painted scenes from history, and if they painted portraits, they would paint a pope or a king, they certainly wouldn't paint an ordinary everyday person. And Corbet rejects academic art, and that's what this figure represents, and it's in the shadows of the center of the photo of the painting, the, 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 the first um, grouping uh, in the painting, and that's Corbet himself. And what's he painting? He's painting a landscape, and this is a landscape of where he comes from uh, outside of Paris. And landscapes were really frowned upon by the academic uh, art institutions. They were not considered worthy of serious artists to paint. So by showing himself painting a landscape, it's almost as if Corbet is declaring war on the academic art establishment. Uh, and, and that's what we're, we're seeing here. Now, in addition to himself with his palette and his brushes painting this landscape, he shows us two other figures with him. And one is this young boy here. And this young boy symbolizes the eyes of innocence. And what Corbet is saying is that he values the opinion of this young boy who has been completely uneducated. He values his opinion much more than uh, the, opinions, uh, the opinions of the educated bourgeoisie who are just steeped in uh, just in tradition and they just parrot what uh, they read about by the these art critics that Corbet has rejected over here. So these are the eyes of in innocence. Now when we see a nude woman in an artist's studio we assume that she is the artist's model but clearly this woman is not his model. She's standing behind him and uh, he isn't painting her. He's painting this landscape. So who is she? Well she is symbolizing the naked truth. She is the one who is guiding his brush, the naked truth. He is portraying truth on his canvas as opposed to the artifice of the art establishment. And notice how he's painted here. Um, there are two heads. 
her head is kind of tilting to her right and that's balanced so nicely with his head that's tilted to his left in this wonderful balance here. Now let's talk about the right side of the painting, this last side. Now this is, uh, these, uh, everybody here that's painted here is a real person, is a portrait of a person. I'm not going to tell you exactly who everybody is because we don't really have the time. But this grouping here, these are his socialist political friends and also art collectors and patrons. Now art collectors and patrons tended to be part of the bourgeoisie that he uh, didn't have too much, uh, 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 too many good things to say about, but he realized that art collectors and art patrons were necessary for him in order to earn a living to continue to paint. So he does do some portraits of, of his friends who are collectors and, um, and uh, um, patrons uh, of his. But he, oh, and also notice how the light is coming into the studio on this side of the work, of the, the side of, of his friends. He called them his shareholders. And the light is coming in. It's illuminating him, but it's coming through all of these shareholders. Now, the two people I do want to talk to you about who they are. First one is this figure here. This is Jules Chanfleury. Now, Chanfleury was a friend of his. He was a writer and a critic. And he was the founder of the realist movement in literature. He introduced Courbet to the ideas of realism, and he also was one of the first people to promote Courbet's art. So Courbet gives him kind of a pride of place here, sitting here. The second one is this figure here in the corner. Now this is Charles Baudelaire. Now Baudelaire was the foremost uh, poet of the era and he was also an art critic as well and he was very very important um, uh, several years after this painting was done in 1863 he wrote a book called the painter of modern life and that kind of uh, uh, brought um, all of the young artists uh, of the era together to start painting in a new way and the, all of these artists we, we know of today are av as the Impressionists and they were all motivated by the writings of Baudelaire and here he is. Now notice here right next to Baudelaire, do you see the shadowy figure here? This is a woman and this is a real person. This is Baudelaire's mistress, her name was Jeanne Duval, and Jeanne Duval was of mixed race. And therefore, Courbet is kind of making a commentary about how society uh, deals with race in this time by painting her here in the shadows. She's, she's a shadowy figure here. So here's the painting again, the whole painting. Uh, that's what I have to tell you about uh, the painter's studio by Gustave Courbet. Um, Courbet was a central figure um, in the revolutionary movement after the um, terrible end of the Franco-Prussian War where France had to surrender. And uh, afterwards there was an uprising of the working class and we call that the Paris Commune. And Courbet was a central figure in that. And um, because of that, he was forced to flee France in 1871 and he died in exile in Switzerland. But um, still, even though he had kind of that, that um, ignoble end to his life, he is still remembered today for the indelible contributions that he made to the development of modernism in art. Um, so thank you for joining me today. I do want to tell you that you can find me on Facebook. If you go to Facebook and go into that search bar and, and put Janet Mandel Art Talks in there, uh, you can get to my Art Talks page. And I have, uh, besides, um, putting up these mini art talks. I also have other things in the, uh, on there, which I think will interest you. Um, and then of course, this is my um, uh, um, YouTube channel. And again, the same thing. If you put my name and art talks into the search bar, you can come you can find it. I'm also on Instagram and uh, you can find me at Art Talks with Janet on Instagram. And I also have a web page. Um, it, one of the things uh, that I has on my webpage is my schedule for the spring, which of course is now all canceled, but um, I am going to put on there my schedule for my art talks, my uh, virtual art talks, not these mini talks, which are only 10 minutes or so, but my longer art talks that I do for uh, libraries and um, also adult schools 
and you can see the topics and a little bit of a description of the topics and find out how to register and how to get your um, uh, your link to to join those art talks as well so I hope um, that you can connect in some way and that you keep watching my my mini art talks which have been so much fun for me to do um, and uh, keeping me busy at this time when when we're all locked down in our homes thank you for joining me see you again soon bye bye